Sam's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number 13 from the June 2022 international, well, actually it's the UK GCE A-level paper, 9MA02, paper two. And this question here is about vectors and it relates to P4 of the international A-level at Excel exam. So this is a question actually I've chosen specifically because a lot of students were asking about how to prove that these points in vectors lie on a straight line. So we have the point A has position vector 4i minus 3j plus 5k. Now when it says position vector, what it means is in relation to the origin, as I said, relative to a fixed origin O. So basically, point A has position vector this, it means the vector from... O to A, let me just make this a bit more neater. So the vector from O to A is this vector here. I'm going to write this as a column vector because I find it much easier in calculation. So that's 4i minus 3j plus 5k. You don't have to keep writing i, j's and k's everywhere. It makes it easier. Um, and O to B, the position vector of B is 4j plus 6k. That means the i component is 0. So 0, 4, 6. And the position vector of C, O to C, is negative 16i plus pj plus 10k. So this is unknown there, P, K, pj, right? So that's the position vector of C, where p is a constant. It says, given that a, b, and c lie on a straight line, find the value of p. Okay, so basically, if they lie on the same straight line, okay, then... Basically, they have the same, they are parallel to each other. In terms of not parallel, they have the same direction. Okay, they have the same direction. So first of all, what we have here, if we think about it, if we draw a little diagram, what we have here, say this is O, say this is A, say this is B, and say this is C. Okay, they line a straight line, we know that. We've got to show, we're told that they show the line a straight line. We don't have to show it, we're told that they line a straight line. So for sure they lie on a straight line. So I'll draw a straight line first then. That's A, that's B, and that's C. They all lie on a straight line. What we have here in this equation, what we've been given, is we've been given the vector from O to A, and the vector from O to B, and the vector from O to C. That's what we've been given. Okay, so this is the vector O to A, which is 4 minus 3 and 5. And this is a vector from O to B, which is 0, 4, and 6. And this is a vector from O to C, which is negative 16, P, and 10. So what I know is that the vector from A to B and the vector from B to C, okay, have the same direction. So I can use that to find what P is. Why? How can I do that? Well, let's first find the vector from A to B. The vector from A to B. Okay, going along the line. If I want to go from A to B, I've got to go from A to O, and then from O to B. If I'm going from, o to A, from A to O, it's like the opposite direction of this vector. So it's like doing OB minus OA. If I want to go from there to there, I go AO, which is minus OA plus OB. Okay, so if I subtract these vectors, I get A to B. Okay, so if I subtract them, so I have 0, 4, and 6, minus 4, negative 3, and 5, which is 0 minus 4, which is negative 4, 4 minus minus 3, which is 7, 6 minus 5, which is 1. That's the vector from A to B. Okay, that's A to B. Okay, and if I want to find the vector from B to C, okay, from B to C, what we can do is we can go from B to O and then from O to C. B to O and O to C. So B to O is like minus OB and O to C is OC. So it's like saying O to C minus O to B. So O to C is negative 16 and P and 10. And O to B is 0, 4 and 6. So we have minus 16 minus 0, which is minus 16. And you have P minus 4. And you have 10 minus 6, which is 4. So that's a vector from B to C. Now, if A, B, and C are all on the same straight line, that means A, B 
is equal to some constant times BC. Means they're going in the same direction. Okay. If they're all in the straight, if, if these three points are in the straight line, then the vector going from A to B and then from B to C must be in the same direction. All right. And because they're both, both these lines pass through B, they must be on one straight line. Okay, so we know that in the straight, we know that they're on a straight line because the question says, given that A, B, C, A, B, and C line a straight line, so I know for sure that the vector from A to B is going to be some multiple of B to C. Some it's going to be something times B to C. So if I say that minus four, I can say here minus four seven one must be equal to some constant times minus sixteen uh, p minus four and 4. All right, so we can work out the value of k, all right, from looking at these vectors. You can see that k must be 4, all right, because um, this is, well, not 4, a quarter. You can say that minus 4 equals minus 16 times k. So therefore, k is equal to a quarter. Okay, if I wrote the other way around, it would be 4. Okay, so what I can say here is that k is a quarter, all right? If I wrote it the other way around, I could have put k here. That would probably have been better. Okay, I could have said that k times ab is equal to bc. That way I won't end up with a, with a fraction. That would probably be the more sensible way to write it. In which case, we can say minus 4k is equal to minus 16. Okay, and we can say that 7k is equal to p minus 4, and 1k is equal to 4. So we know k equals 4, so we can now work out what p is, because you know we can see that this, this vector, basically every component is 4 times that vector. Okay, so we can say um, 7 equals, so 7k, sorry, equals p minus 4. So 7 times 4, 7 times 4, equals p minus 4, so that's 28 equals p minus 4, so therefore p is equal to 24, 28 plus 4, which is 32. So p equals 32, there's the answer for that part A of this question. Okay, so we found the value of p, because we know they lie in a straight line, so that means if they lie in a straight line, the vector from A to B and the vector from B to C, they have the same direction, so A to B is equal to some constant times B to C, or the other way around. I found the other way around makes my numbers easier, so I did it the other way around. I said some constant times A to B is the same as B to C. This 4, this is 4, right? So we can see that 4 times 7 equals P minus 4, and we solve um, the problem, okay? That's the answer to that question. Um, part B of the question, part B. It says that the line segment O to B is extended to a point D, so that C to D is parallel to O to A. Okay, so let's just take a snapshot of this and bring it back here. Okay, so I'm just going to paste this over here. Okay, what have they told us? They've told us that the line segment O to B is extended to D, such that C to D is parallel to O to A. Okay, so basically we've got to make a line here that's parallel to O to A, and we've got to extend the line O to B until that point. Okay, something like that. So this is the point D. So it says O to B is extended to the point D such that C to D is parallel to O to A. Okay, they're parallel lines. All right, so it says, find the magnitude of O to D. So we've got to find the magnitude of the vector O to D, writing your answer as a fully simplified search. So we've got to find first the vector from O to D. Okay, so what we can say here is um, O to D is like O to C plus C to D. Now C to D is parallel to O to A. So how am I going to work out? I know it's going to have, I know C to D is basically some constant, let me say M, 
times O to A. Because it's parallel to it. Okay? And O to A is, um, let me write it like this first, M times O to A. So therefore we can say C to D is equal to a constant M times 4 minus 3 and 5. Okay, that's the vector from C to D. But it's not the same length, it's, it's parallel to it. What is the ratio of the lengths of C to D and O to A? Well, these two triangles, I can say the triangle um, A, B, O is similar to the triangle. Um, we can say um, C, B, D. How do I know that? Because I know these lines are parallel. And I know that this angle must be the same as this angle. And I know this angle must be the same as that angle. And I know this angle must be the same. So they're, they're, definitely, um, they're definitely similar figures. And I know that, as we worked out just now, that uh, 4 times A to B is equal to B to C. Right? So we can say that the scale factor is going to be um, 4. So that means this this is basically four times as big as that, right? So we can say that uh, the scale factor is, I can say C to D is definitely four times, um, four times O to A. Okay, this is four times O to A. All right, because we worked out that uh, BC is four times AB. That means CD is four times OA. Okay, so now I can work out the position vector of D. I know O to D is equal to O to C plus C to D. Okay, so O to D is equal to O to C, which is minus 16 and 20 and 32. We found what P is, is 32. Minus 16 and 32 and 10 plus C to D, which is four times O to A, which is four minus three, five. Okay, so when we add these together, we get our answer. So O to D, you have minus 16 plus 16, which is 0. 32 minus 12, which is 20. And 10 plus 20, which is 30. So this is our vector from O to D. And they want the magnitude of O to D. The magnitude of O to D is the square root of 0 plus 20 squared plus 30 squared. Okay, so we can work out what that is. Square root of 20 squared plus 30 squared. Which gives us 10 root 13. 10 root 13. That's the magnitude of the vector from O to D as a fully simplified set. Okay, so that, that completes question number 13 from this June 2022 um, GCE a-level paper from the UK. Other questions from this particular paper can be found, this is of paper two, can be found in the playlist that will be linked in this area over here. In this area will be the link for the topic of vectors from P4, International A-level, and here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link here, and the link above here will take you to a video which explains how to use my channel uh, to help you find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.